Section 5. Code Quality In this section, we'll talk about how we can check and improve the quality of our code. We'll first look at linting Python code using PyLint, we'll use SonarCube to perform further checks on our code and to import other results, and finally, we'll talk about type checking in Python. Let's jump in. Linting in this video, we'll take a look at Python coding standards and how to use PyLint to find potential bugs in our code. Writing code in Python is super easy, as you probably already know. The interpreter is very permissive, and we can use Python's high-level syntax to write the same program in many different ways. That's great if you're writing code just for yourself. But what if other people have to use or modify your code? They might have a hard time understanding some of the choices you make, like variable and constant names, or number of methods in a class and so on. Getting developers to agree on the same things is a very hard problem, one that might not be solved in our lifetime. In the meantime, we have some developers working on coding style guides. Python has one as well, and it's called Python Enhancement Proposal, or PEP8. Now, there are a lot of recommendations in that document that cover code layout, string quotes, naming conventions, imports, to name a few. You should definitely read it and try to apply it in your code. Because this is just a guide, Python does not enforce it in any way. But we want our code to be readable and understandable by as many developers as possible. So we're going to use PyLint to enforce it. PyLint is a third-party Python module that will check your code for style issues and potential bugs. It's very easy to use and to customize, so let's see it in action. We have here the infamous Flickr downloader module we've been working on. Let's run PyLint to check the style. We'll first install PyLint. Next, we'll run PyLint on our package here. It's not that bad. It's also not that good. We got a very average 6.4 out of 10. You can see here in the report that we have some stuff we can fix. So let's fix it and check again. We're here in our Flickr downloader Python module, and first off, we'll fix the doc strings issue. As you can see here, we have a missing module doc string, a missing function doc string. So we're going to fix that. PyLint is right. We don't have any doc strings for our module. How are developers even going to know what this module does? Let's add it. All right. Next up, we have a constant here, logger, on line seven, that doesn't follow the naming convention. Let's fix it. So we're going on line seven. Well, it's line eight now because we added the doc string. We have this constant that we need to rename to use the uppercase convention. This is a constant because we never changed the value. Okay. We have a function doc string missing here on line 32, actually 33 now. We're going to jump there. This is the function. We're going to add our doc string. Okay. Next up, a variable that doesn't conform to the snake case naming style because the variable name is too short. So we're going to expand it on line 38. That's 37 plus one. Actually, it's even more than that because we have a huge doc string. But you'll trust me, make this one. So we're going to expand the name of this variable, executor. And we also have an import order issue. Standard imports should come before other imports. So in our case, we have the requests first, so we're going to put this last. Okay, let's run PyLint again. All we have now is the line too long issues. So our code is now a 9.2 out of 10. You can see the previous run. It's a pretty good increase. We only have these two issues now. And that's some very good advice to have the lines a bit shorter. Our lines should not be too long to improve readability. It's easier to check code vertically than horizontally, but we'll assume all the developers that work on this have huge monitors 
so it's not going to be an issue. We'll just disable this check for now. To do that, we'll create a pylint rc file. And this file will explicitly declare that we don't need this rule. So we're going to put in the directive here in the messages control, and we're going to disable the line to long. Let's check again. We see that we now have no errors and we have a nice 10 out of 10. Awesome. To recap, in this video, we've talked about Python coding style and we've seen how we can use PyLint to check if our code follows that guide or not.